and welcome to this webinar on BI modernization with Looker and Bitwise. My name is Nathan Nichols, Head of Partnership here at Bitwise. We have a packed agenda today covering introductions to Bitwise and Looker, followed by recommendations for BI modernization and a real-world Looker implementation case study. We'll also have time for Q&A at the end of the session, so feel free to send your questions via the question feature, or you can contact us at any time at sales at bitwiseglobal.com. Joining me today are two presenters well qualified to talk about BI modernization. Donan J. Shin, a BI solution architect at Bitwise, brings over eight years of extensive experience in designing and developing BI solutions and delivering end-to-end -end BI implementations. Mark Guerin is an enterprise account director with over four years at Looker and a demonstrated history of working in the computer software industry. Before I pass things over to Mark and Don and Jay, let me first provide a quick introduction to Bitwise. Bitwise, a global technology consulting and services company, uses over 24 years of enterprise data management experience to help bridge gaps between traditional BI and cutting edge technologies, including big data and cloud. What truly sets Bitwise apart is our technology leadership in creating unique accelerators and frameworks that reduce the time, complexity, and cost of large-scale initiatives, such as BI modernization and cloud migration. Bitwise has offices in London and Chicago, and our global delivery centers are in Pune, India. As a technology solutions provider, we help our global clients leverage data to enable business insights and maximize their competitive advantage. To this end, we partner with the leading data and analytics companies including organizations like Talon, Snowflake, and of course, Google Cloud and Looker. And with that, I'd like to pass things over to Mark to provide an introduction to Looker. Mark? Thanks a million, Nathan, and uh, glad to be a part of, of the webinar today and talking about BI modernization. So uh, to kick things off, we just have two short slides on Looker um, and how we fit into uh, both GCP and uh, other multi-cloud strategies. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick overview of Looker's offering and some of the core tenants that we see as kind of big shifts in the modernized data market. So just to kind of start with what's on the slide in front of you, this is Looker's architecture slide. So two key points that we really like to focus on is that Looker and GCP have taken a multi-cloud strategy for our parts of this deployment. So Looker connects to over 50 different dialects of SQL databases and can be hosted in all major cloud providers. So that's a really, really core tenant on why Looker is kind of becoming one of the first choices for, uh, for you know, big organizations in financial services and other retail uh, or kind of other verticals across the space. So moving on to the next slide, we just kind of want to have a quick look at why companies are choosing Looker. So I know that there's quite a lot of information on this slide. So just moving on over to the right hand of this, we're going to look at some of the core tenants. So Looker has a live database connection and has always been founded on that premise. So what we're trying to do is move away from old architectures of managing big heavy loads in databases and start to move to more performant databases, the likes that you see in AWS with Snowflake and with BigQuery. So what we've done is we've put a model on top of those databases to make business access to those as simple as possible. But everyone that's able to access metrics from a Looker database or from a Looker API call for that matter has the same underlying transformation. So all of your business logic scales to thousands and hundreds of thousands of users, as we'll see in our financial services example later today. And then the last tenant on the right-hand side is how Looker has the ability to explore and present data. So Looker you know, does have a core tenants of a BI tool, but we consider ourselves much more of a platform. And the reason that we do that is because 
rather than dragging people to a BI tool to have to do their ad hoc analysis to visualize data, what we want to do is we want to work with modern workflows like Office 365, like Microsoft Teams, like Slack, like Salesforce, so that you can engage your business users where they work. And that's a big one for us. So what we want to do is we want to be the platform that feeds governed data to wherever people need it. And that can be both to users and to applications. So I know that that's probably a bit to digest in a short space of time, but if you'll forgive me my brevity, um, one thing I would say is that if you're interested in learning any more at a high level about Looker, uh, please get in contact with both Bitwise or ourselves. We'd love to talk to any of the attendees today. And separately, there will be time for questions um, on the back end of the call. So although this is very high level, uh, if you have any kind of things you want to drill into in a little bit more detail, uh, I'd be delighted to kind of speak or take questions at the end uh, based on the, the availability that we have in the call. So from that, um, I'll pass on to Danaje um, to run on to the next session of the presentation and looking forward to, to speaking to everyone um, over the course of the, the webinar today. Thank you, Mark. That was really nice insight into the, the heart of the Looker architecture. Um, so the repetition of the common BI problems might uh, demotivate businesses to lose and question the value of the business intelligence. But before we dive into these uh, problems, I would like to thank each and every one of you uh, for joining us today for this presentation. Uh, I'm sure you definitely find all this uh, presentation useful for building your uh, BI strategy. So what are the common challenges we may face in, in BI modernization? Identifying these challenges is really important first step in formulating sound BI strategy. Uh, let's take a look into some of these challenges. Uh, please note that this is not all inclusiveness and we may not go over each and every one of them today, but you feel free and uh, feel free to reach back to us always and uh, we'll, we'll be able to address any questions you might have. So first and most common challenge uh, would be the data varieties. Nowadays industries find it difficult to access the right data at the right time and even if they find what they are looking for data formats are typically so complex and unstructured it's hard to aggregate that data to be consumed by the bi tools not considering the data varieties up front may set up the bi strategy to fail once the data varieties are identified next comes the data integration getting this data from these various sources and putting it in the format that is consumable for the bi platform is the next problem to solve Getting this data in timely manner may be important for business as processing data in real time facilitates prompt decision making. Uh, the next challenge is the skills and effort required to make your BI strategy a reality. Many times companies might have well articulated requirement, a sound BI strategy and a good tool solution, but the lack of technical skills like designing, building, maintaining, and supporting BI applications uh, may be what caused their BI strategy to fail. This results in the BI applications to run slowly, break frequently, deliver uncertain results, and eventually leading to rising cost of the BI solutions. The causes of lack of the execution often are multiples and varied, as are its remedies. Data security is yet another concern that has to be addressed. Security of data at rest, as well as prevention of unauthorized exposure is very important as aspect of securing business assets. Your BI strategy should blend well with enterprise security considerations and should no way compromise the data security. Next challenge would be the scalability. Uh, scalability at functional as well as non-functional aspects. The functional scalability consists of how hard to add the new feature to your platform. Non-functional aspect of it would be, which is also the, our next challenge is performance. How well a system behaves under load and latency in a system defines its usability by different stakeholders. Uh, gone are the days when executive used to wait for days to get the reports they requested. It is the generation of the self-service where information is expected 
in the real time. Though all of us know that how important BI and analytics is in decision making and growth of the organization, it may not be primary revenue generating stream for most of the organizations. And so the business may not be keen on spending a lot on, on the BI processes. That's where the cost control comes into the picture, getting maximum out of the BI platform while keeping costs low is a key challenge to solve. And the last but not least, installation and the deployment. In today's agile world, time to market has become a key element in successful product. Getting system up and running quickly is a, is a goal of every organization which heavily relies on the BI strategy. Apart from getting it up and running, deploying incremental changes are also important to get the new functionalities to the production. So now let's talk about some of the considerations to successfully tackle the common challenges we just discussed. Considerations mentioned here again are the general guidelines and may need to be tweaked based upon the business, business needs. The considerations in incorporating the data varieties of the sources would contain formats of the data from various sources, structured versus non-structured data, melting together the data from various sources that it can be consumed by the BI platform, different data storage options, the creation of an integrated platform that can store huge volumes of the data while also organizing and analyzing it to your specification is another thing while thinking of incorporating the data from the variety of the sources. Once the data sources are identified and the storage options are decided, it is time to think about the data integration strategy. Data pipelines could play a vital role in data integration. A BI solution, which could be loaded with automatic ETL capabilities to process the data sets that needs to be restructured will be a real solution here. This will enable users to create a single source as well as front end with data visualization capabilities. Ideally, the back end of the solution would be able to manipulate the data for it to be analyzed in the front end. Also, the ability to capture and process the data from multiple sources in real time facilitates the prob decision making, as mentioned earlier. The polygon data persistence may need to be considered if the data from the various sources cannot be aggregated in a single data storage option. Mix of storage technologies needs to be used. In that case, a new BI platform should be able to work against all these data storage options effectively. Next one is the embedded analytics, but I will skip it for now as we are going to discuss it in brief later in this presentation. Uh, lots of organization may not be satisfied with the BI system they already have. If executives in the organizations are still using the Excel extensively to get insight from their BI system, then that is the indication of the deficiency in, in the BI systems. A good practice would be to replace the Excel sheets with the intuitive dashboards to make data more engaging, meaningful, and eventually very powerful. Hence, for this a BI solution should provide the ability to create as advanced filters and the calculations all without a coding. A self-service business intelligence solution enables executives to create a customized report in no time with little involvement of IT once the entire solution is implemented. In data security section, the selection of the storage options and the BI tools play a vital role. Try to use out of the box security features from the BI tools before turning to custom security implementations to handle the security. For data encryption, always use well-known encryption algorithm with out of the box implementations from data storage tools. For the system scalability, things to be considered would be the scalable architecture with scalable environments. For scalable architecture, make sure to factor in all possible business needs upfront so that there are very really less changes afterward. 
try to follow open and closed principle, meaning system should be open for extensions, but closed for modifications. With availability of the various cloud providers, scalable environment has become the reality of most of the organizations. Systems can now design to virtually scale to infinity in vertical as well as horizontal manner. We discussed earlier as to how the embedded analytics could be helpful in satisfying your business needs. Hybrid approach is what enables you to implement the embedded analytics. You could take advantage of unique features from, uh, from the BI tool, language and platforms and combine them to create your own homogeneous platform. The selection of the BI tool and the technologies is going to determine your development phase. Certain selection would need very high time upfront, but once it is up and live, adding new feature would be quick and fast. Other selection could give you a quick to market benefit upfront, but any new feature may take a considerable amount of time. Choice would be yours, whether you need rapid development or quick to market benefit. And last but not the least is the deployment. An organization adapt to agile software development methodologies, a DevOps strategy has become as important as your software development strategy. Or as I always say, DevOps must be a coherent part of your overall system strategy. Selection of the BI tool impacts your develop, uh, development process as well as your DevOps process. With the help of the right BI tool, DevOps strategy and the cloud technologies, you can destroy and rebuild your platform in minutes, making deployment a piece of So let's move to the next slide. So, um, so the the use case that we are going to see today uh, is the use case of the Fortune 500 financial giant in the US, uh, which has business over north america uk and asia specific region they had an on-premises bi platform but was having hard time to use an adoption mainly due to the technical limitation that's when they decided to rebuild the bi platform using cloud technology to drive reporting and the visualization adoption across the extensive user base by providing the better user experience of the business intelligence applications thereby increasing the revenue and reducing the cost of premises on premises bi platform uh, and the data lake so they have over 1 million customer uh, on their credit card processing platform uh, so as part of this particular use case they migrated over 9 billions of data that the, the card processing data from their on premises warehouse to to the BigQuery and built a, a integrated platform using the Looker and the GCP, which would cater to the needs of the merchants to deliver the reports effectively to them. Let's go to the next slide. So this is again the uh, the brief introduction to the uh, to the use case that we had. So there, there are various you challenges. Had wanted to add here, Mark? Yeah, yeah. So um, I think that I think that you know the core tenants of what Dan and Jay covered. Uh, really speak to some of the flexibility that you get from modernizing the stack. I think just to quickly jump in on what I'd say for this particular use case is that the aspects that are being delivered by Looker with the rest of the supporting systems, you know, account for about 80% of the overall delivery. And that's why kind of what we aim for in a lot of these deployments is to try and give 
uh, a good social of backing so that you know anyone that wants to do this for their business has a rapid time to value but then the last 20 percent also offers a large amount of flexibility and i think some of the issues that jana jay uh, went through earlier about why bi projects sometimes have false starts and that's what we're trying to do is we don't want to be too prescriptive as looker by allowing customers to still maintain ownership about how they serve up these reports to their clients. So I suppose that that would be an interesting call out that I think I'd have, um, Nathan, but you know, it'd be really interesting to see if, if yourself or anyone else from Bitwise has, uh, has other thoughts. Definitely. And, and for the same thing, let, let's go to the next slide, which is actually the kind of the heart of this whole uh, case study where we try to resolve most of these issues that we observe with the uh, you know kind of an architecture uh, which which kind of an one of its kind so the business problems uh, are much wider and deeper than the even before and the insights are hiding in inside a variety of the data sources the analytics tools are also evolving continuously to be able to deal with an ever-changing data ecosystem. However, there is no one size fits all answer for the BI analytics. Embedded analytics is the ability to embed the right set of BI analytics tools within business applications, portals, and the commercial software products. Seamlessly with no or less footprint of the tools to emphasize on the organization's process flow and branding. We'll be discussing a case study, and that this this case study is is how the how the Bitwise and Luca helped the financial client to implement the embedded BI architecture. So what you see on the screen is is the embedded analytics architecture. Uh, Luca was selected as a BI tool after careful review and the evaluation to support the visualization and the self service capabilities required for reporting business intelligence analytics and other payment processing activities needed for merchant account maintenance and transaction processing some of the important scenarios which we had to pay more attention was to large volumes of the payment data for merchants spread across the globe this data was in various formats ranging from mainframe files to relational databases strategic decisions to migrate all on premises applications to the cloud the google cloud platform was one of the scenario uh, under which this architecture was developed the on premises bi application was uh, developed in the web focus and the looker was looker was chosen to replace uh, for the cloud strategy in addition to scenarios there were other problems which uh, which to be solved includes higher cost on premises platform, performance issues and the limited UI UX features that hindered the user experience from the legacy tools. Client required a reporting and the visualization tool that fit within the GCP cloud strategy. Solution needed to meet the, the stringent business timeline for migration and facilitating the cultural change among the end users adapting to the new cloud-based applications. So let's quickly evaluate this architecture against the considerations that we just discussed. Data that feeds this architecture comes from various sources like mainframe files, various Oracle databases, transaction processing gateways, net is on-prem data lake, etc. The data is then processed through the data pipeline developed in the Google data flow and piped into the various data storage options like Google storage bucket, Google BigQuery, Cloud SQL, and Google Data Store. Then the Looker, Looker BI platform is used to create the data visualizations. Looker APIs are also used to supply the data to the branded portal. The microservice layer between Looker and the front end helps to facilitate the communication and also act as the authorization model. Authentication is performed using the Azure B2C identity provided. Branded website is developed in React framework and hosted on the Google Cloud platform. Bitwise and Looker participated in implementing this architecture, which is live in production right now. 
customer has already started seeing the benefits of this embedded analytics platform and is now trying to bring in other applications to the platform to provide one-stop solution to all the user. Looker as a BI tool was very instrumental in realization of this architecture due to the two things, out of the box, highly interactive data visualization capabilities, along with the options to customize it with the custom JavaScript libraries. And the second thing was the out of the box data API capabilities, which are very important in embedded analytics platform. If you would like to take a technical deep dive into this or similar architecture, please feel free to contact us on the details provided later in the presentation. So this is the sneak peek into the platform developed using the architecture we just briefly discussed. These are the data visualizations along with the branded reports, which are powered through the custom built microservices and Looker APIs. So using Looker as APIs, we achieve data as a service model for integrating with multiple front ends. Using Looker cache policies, we were able to improve the performance of the reports and dashboards by almost 30%. With the Looker data group components, database hits were reduced by 40%, resulting in enhanced user experience. Real-time data insights and interactive data visualizations while handling large volumes of data, which enables the effective business decision was one of the key results that we achieved as part of this particular uh, migration. Greater flexibility for the end users and the business analyst to directly explore the data and create on the fly reports and the visualization with minimal knowledge of SQL is one of the other uh, key results that we achieve. Since Looker is hosted on the cloud, there are no cost or effort involved in maintenance of the um, infrastructure. Unlike other reporting tool, Looker has a web-based interface, so there is no additional software to install. So this whole solution was uh, introduced, introduced, uh, introduced to the production with minimal cost. And with this one, back to you, Nathan. Great, thanks, Sanjay. So just to wrap up here, want to uh, close with some takeaways here. Whether you are exploring use cases, evaluating tools, or need help building your strategy and roadmap, Bitwise and Looker can help. Feel free to contact us. Or you can reach out directly to sales at bitwiseglobal.com to explore strategy assessment options or to get a deep dive into the case study we presented. Before moving on to the Q&A, we do have a couple minutes left to get to a couple questions. I want to take a moment to thank our presenters, Mark and Donajay, and especially thank you for taking time to join us today. Now let's get to the questions. As mentioned, you can send your questions via the question feature. We have a couple here that we can get through, and based on the time, we'll get through as many as we can. Uh, if we don't get to your question, we will we can reach out separately and provide an answer. So the the first question here is I think more directed towards Mark uh, regarding the the relationship with Google Cloud. Uh, so Mark, how long has Google BigQuery or GCP been partnering with Looker prior to the acquisition? Um, I'm not sure in an official capacity. I know that in terms of Looker's premier partners, we all, we've always been working with kind of the leading database providers, be it AWS Redshift, uh, Snowflake, um, and also BigQuery. So in terms of our partnership, it is longstanding and definitely predates uh, the acquisition. But as I mentioned, it's been kind of a, a multi-cloud strategy. We haven't kind of just been all in on, on BigQuery, and that is not the intention going forward. So my best estimate uh, would be that we've been working with BigQuery for between three to five years on you know comparative features to make sure you can take advantage of features in BigQuery as soon as they as soon as possible in Looker. 
Um, but it's always been um, in parallel with our other data premier database providers being some of the guys that I mentioned just now. Okay. And then kind of following up on that, Mark, regarding embedded analytics, what would you say are some of the biggest benefits of, uh, of buying a Looker embedded analytics solution versus building your own? Um, well, there's a couple, uh, but I suppose that this is a really good question and kind of to put it to a T, um, Looker is a, is a dedicated uh, BI and data product. And we have an engineering team of approximately 100 people constantly increasing the performance, increasing the types of features that you can expect from Looker and paired with that is monthly updates. So as you invest in a, an embedded strategy like Looker, you can have full confidence in the fact that we are working tediously to improve your user's experience and your experience as a, as a client owner or one of our customers. So that would be one. Another one that I would say is that what Looker's built for is it's built so that you can allow people at any stage of their analytics journey to have access to the reports that they need. So you can have a lightweight kind of read-only deployment. You can use Looker's API to power custom visualizations that you want or topo JSON files for maps. But you can also go right to the end where you're allowing your users create their own visuals, dashboards, and pieces of analysis within your application. So you can kind of go from a very basic user up to what we would consider kind of market leading or most sophisticated, all within the Looker platform so that you don't have to fully anticipate what your customers are going to ask for because as they graduate or as they move up the level of sophistication, that you know that the platform that you've chosen has the ability to service those requests that you might not be getting today. And that's something that we get quite a bit. You might start with a very simple reporting solution, but given today's market, as soon as people get access for to data, the next question is, well, what does it look like split by X dimension or Y dimension? Or can I see it for this period? Or can I compare this to another data set that I have um, outside of this product? And what we want to do is we want to start those questions, start that line of questioning, and also support those use cases as people kind of you know become more familiar with what data on your platform as a customer can do. So that, that's a big one um, that I would say is that things constantly get better and you can service a wide range of requests without having to build for one solution. You can build for what you anticipate your customers will ask next. Um, so that would be kind of the key components for me, I expect. Okay, very good. And with that, uh, we'll have to leave it there. If we did not fully answer your question, or uh, if you have follow-up questions, again, reach out to us at sales at bitwiseglobal.com, and we will, between Mark, the Looker, and Bitwise team, we will provide the answer there. And with that, I'd like to thank, again, Mark and Don and Jay for the presentation, and thank you for joining us today. We look forward to talking with you soon. Thank you, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody, for joining. It was, it was great to speak to you all. Thank you. Thank you.